Hello, welcome to this advanced video lesson on creative compositing. And here you can take a variety of found objects like this old picture frame and reshape it and combine it with other shots like this butterfly in a rather tatty box and this bit of cloth. And these don't look very remarkable on their own, but when you combine them in Photoshop using a variety of techniques, you've got this amazing museum piece where the butterfly is now proudly exhibited on what looks like a cloth or canvas wall um, in a much more interesting looking frame. We've actually reshaped the frame. If you look at the original, it's much different. We've repaired the tears and we've made the butterfly look much more bright and presentable too. We've taken out the pins and we've adjusted and tinted the cloth to create this composite image. But let's kick off from scratch by going to File, New, and creating a new canvas for our piece of art. Now what we're going to do is set the drop down to inches, and we'll make a square image of 15 inches wide by 15 inches high. And to get a nice quality print, let's set the resolution to 240 pixels per inch, set the background contents to white, and we can label this as Red Admiral in honour of our butterfly. Click OK, and that will create our document. Now pop up to File, go to Open, and then browse to Butterfly Before, double click and that will open it up. I'll just press Z for the Zoom tool, right click and choose Fit on Screen. If I hit Tab and get the floating windows out of the way, that will get even bigger. There we go. And we can now start to make a selection. And the easiest way actually is to select the background and then inverse it to select the butterfly, because the butterfly itself is quite complicated. So we're going to use a selection tool from up here. If you click and hold down on the magic wand selection, you can choose Quick Selection Tool. And that will allow you to make a new selection by clicking here. And we can just create a larger brush tip if we like. And then click and start spraying around the edge of the butterfly. And if I hit Tab again, it gets rid of the layers palette so we can actually carry on uh, making our selection. And don't worry about the antennae, they're the fiddliest thing and we're going to get those later. So it may seem to chop them off um, at this stage. But just select around the edge of the box. Don't worry if you don't get all of the edges of the box. We're just interested in the bits around the butterfly itself. This shadow is a little bit similar to the butterfly's texture. So what we'll do is click and select here and then Control plus to zoom in and refine the selection. Now I'm just going to hit tab again to get the floating windows back up because we need some of the tools here. We need to go to subtract from selection because if we control plus to zoom in you'll see that it's kind of digging into the edge of the butterfly. So if I click and spray now with this little tool we should be able to get rid of these areas here. You'll notice there's some white edges around the butterfly as well. Now we'll get those fixed using layer masks later on so it's not crucial to get all of those removed from the initial selection but we can fine tune things a little bit by going to the edge of the wing perhaps and just clicking to remove these bits from the initial selection. Okay so I could spend longer doing that but I'm going to fine tune it a bit later. What we'll do now once we've made all of that selection is to inverse it and to do that we can go to select inverse. So instead of selecting the background, it's now selecting the butterfly. Now initially this selection is going to be a bit rough and ready and a bit sharp so it will look very cut out. So to refine it, click up here and set view to on black and that gives you a much better idea of how sharp and uh, rubbish the selection is looking at the moment. So what we need to do is soften it and refine it. If we take radius to 3.3 then the edge detection will spread out a little bit and it will help soften the edge and we can do that even more by going to Adjust Edge here and changing Smooth to around about 26. You can just type the value straight in instead of using the slider. We'll give it a little bit of a feather as well just to gently soften it, not too much. So 0.7 should do the trick. So the selection is looking less jaggy now thanks to these settings here. But we can fine tune it even more by outputting it to a layer mask. So click here, then click OK and that will automatically change the background layer now to a layer mask and that will mask out the background and leave the butterfly visible and we can then fine tune things to restore bits that are missing. For example if we just zoom in I know that there should be some white areas here so I can grab the brush tool I can click on the mask to make sure I've selected it and then if we set the foreground color to white we can click and spray and restore some missing edges there so we can get the bits of white that we had from the edge of the butterfly. To restore the antennae I'm just going to click and spray to find them in a very rough and ready way to start with. There's one of them. Let me just hold the space bar to get the hand tool there. Okay and what I can do now, let me just tidy that up a bit, is press X to swap the foreground colour to a black and then if I click and then hold shift and click again 
can start drawing straight lines between each point I click and gently tidy up around the edge. Let's do that again, let go of shift, click, hold shift down, click again and then I'll fine tune this and jump forward in time. But there you can see how to hide or show different bits of the butterfly layer. Once you've finished selecting the butterfly by modifying the layer mask, go to edit and transform and just flip the image horizontally to improve the composition. You can then drag the thumbnails from the layer palette onto Red Admiral which is the white background and then click up here to consolidate the view. Then you grab the move tool, pop the butterfly roughly in the middle and it's now ready to have the frame added to it. So to add the frame, go to frame before and then click on it and drag its thumbnail into the Red Admiral document so you've added it to the butterfly there. You can see we've got a layer 2, drag that below layer 1 and the frame is now behind the butterfly. I'm just going to click here, pop up to consolidate view so we can see the shot like so. If I press V I can then take off auto select and move the frame around until it's roughly in position. If I hit tab that gets rid of the distracting floating windows and the frame needs to be transformed and scaled to actually fit into the shot. To make the frame complement the shape of the butterfly, Control T will give you the free transform tool, then double click in height and type in a value of 83, hit return, and then go to width and type in a value of around about 102, and that gives you more of a square frame shape. The frame is a little bit squint, so we can rotate it by using the rotate angle, which is this one here. You can either drag and slide or type in a value, and about 0.69 degrees will get it fairly perpendicular with the edge of the frame. Hit return to apply the changes and then grab the move tool and just reposition it in the center or thereabouts. You can then click on the butterfly layer and move that as well. In fact we can scale the butterfly to Control T and take that down to around about 65%. In fact if we click on here to lock it we can then scale it equally in width and height. Hit return to apply the change to give the butterfly more room to breathe and create a larger frame interior, make a selection with the rectangular marquee and then Control X to cut it, Control V to paste it onto a new layer and then Control T to transform it by 125% in the width and the same for the height. Then hit return to apply the change. You'll then have a much larger frame than the actual background frame there so what you need to do is to just mask that out by making a selection just around the edge of the interior of the frame then if you click add a layer mask that will hide the background there. You can then reposition the frame with the move tool like so. To get rid of this white background and replace it with cloth grab the magic wand and then click to make a selection, shift click to add shadows to that selection and then what you can do is inverse the selection by going to select inverse add a layer mask and that will make the surrounding edge transparent. We can then go to cloth before select copy come back to here and then paste it in and pop it on a layer below layer 2 once that's in and you should see a nice cloth background. You can grab the move tool and reposition it so we've got the lighter bit in the center. To tidy up this tear pop up to layer 3, press S to get the clone stamp tool, alt click to sample a bit of clean felt and make sure you're sampling the current layer only otherwise you'll end up adding the butterfly to the sampled area and then you can tidy up uh, very quickly and easily by spraying like so. You could always use a layer mask just to paint out any bits that overlap the edge but we'll tidy those up later. Now add a levels adjustment layer by clicking here and choosing levels, pop that above the frame layer and then set this to around about 26 for much darker shadows, set this to 196 for much brighter highlights and you get a better contrast on the edge of your frame 195, that's fine, you don't have to be exact. And then what we're going to do is go to the mask on layer 2 and control A to select it all, control C to copy it and then to paste it into levels 1 here you need to click ALT and click to see the actual mask control V will then paste the mask in and that will then apply the levels just to the frame if we turn that on and off you can see it's working on the frame but not on the cloth background then finish off by going to change the blending mode of the levels adjustment layer to vivid light and you get a much higher contrast, reduce that strength, take it down to around about 58 and you can always then click on the mask make a selection and protect the middle bit from being adjusted in such a dramatic way by filling this selection with black. So go to edit, fill and choose black and that should protect that bit there. To make the butterfly stand out, target its layer, pop down to layer styles and choose drop shadow 
and up pops the layer style window. Click on drop shadow to edit its attributes and set distance to around about 18. You can type in the value to make it precise. Set spread to around about 6% and we'll get a nice soft shadow with a value of 27 on the size. Click OK and you'll see we've now got the butterfly standing out a wee bit more from the background. To make the frame stand out from the background, alt click and drag effects onto layer 2 and then you get the same drop shadow effect appearing there. To enhance the background, create a new layer and draw a radial gradient on it with the gradient tool from white to black and that will help darken the corners, set multiplies the blending mode and opacity to 22. And to increase the contrast of the cloth layer, select it and just go to image, auto tone and that should make the blacks blacker and the whites whiter and give you a more contrasty effect. Now to help knit all of our elements together, we're going to add a color balance layer by clicking here and choosing color balance. Then we'll just uh, click to pop that on the top of the layer stack so it affects everything in the project. And then we're going to click here and choose midtones and we're going to adjust these values to warm things up slightly. So we take cyan to about plus eight and we take the yellows to the left there, make things slightly yellower. Round about minus 31 should give us a nice yellowy tint which makes it look more old fashioned. The background's pretty bland, so we're going to add an adjustment layer here, hue saturation, and we're going to colorize it by clicking here, type in a hue of 175, that gives us a bit of a greenish hue, and take saturation down to around about 13 for a more subtle tint. And that helps join the background there and the central frame together to unify all the components. To create a label for our museum piece, you can create a rectangular marquee selection, fill it with white, and then use the burn tool set to the highlights range and just rough it up a little bit by spraying around the edges. I've added a wee bit of noise there as well and use the horizontal type tool to add a nice label. And finally, let's give it a much more dramatic contrast overall with help from a curves adjustment layer. So pop down to curves and pop this all the way at the top. Let me just move that out of the way so we can see the curves thumbnail drag it to the top of the layer stack and then we can choose a nice preset like strong contrast and that positions the curve in a way that gives us darker shadows and brighter highlights. If it's too strong we can reduce the opacity to make a slightly more subtle effect until we're happy with the effect we've got and then close that hit tab to get rid of the floating windows and there is our attractive museum exhibit 